Shooting film is by far my favourite form of photography. The workflow, the aesthetic, and the texture in the final images, it always stands out to me. It's a subject that's been covered enough already, so I'm not going to dig into the details, but defining myself as a film photographer is something I've never really wanted to do. For me, I just love creating images, and so the immediacy of digital photography means it also has its place. And I do genuinely enjoy colour grading a raw image. For years, I've played around with filters and presets, and whilst I was able to replicate some of those characteristics of film, I was always left wanting something more. What I've always wanted from a film emulation workflow is a simple and automated way to simulate some of the colours and tones of film photography, but also something that goes beyond the limitations of Lightroom's platform. For the last few months I've been building out my own film emulation, and today I'm going to show you what that looks like. There's lots of things I like about a film image, but when building out my emulation, I identified four main pillars to focus on. Highlight roll-off, colour, tonality, and texture. I built my workflow around these pillars, and if you'd like to use my own film emulation, there's a link to my website in the description where you can pick this up for a small fee. The pack comes with detailed instructions on how to use the profile, but it also provides guidance on how to expose your images in camera to get the most out of the process. If you also have access to Photoshop, there's a second pack with a set of Photoshop actions for adding grain into your image. Whilst this can be done in the effects module of Lightroom, this is a global adjustment and it's not something I've ever really been convinced by. So I built out an action that applies a more realistic grain texture, but more importantly it applies different levels of grain density into the shadows, midtones, and highlights in the same way as film would. So my process starts off by addressing the first two pillars, which is highlight roll off and colour, and this is all done within the profile. For anyone who doesn't know what a profile is, it's essentially a first step to processing your raw image before applying any of the settings within Lightroom's editing modules. If you look within the profile section of Lightroom, there's usually some stock Adobe color profiles to use, but you can also build your own profiles within Photoshop and import these into Lightroom. If you're planning on doing this process yourself, then you'll need to navigate to Photoshop and open Adobe Camera Raw from the filter section. After making your adjustments to your image, you'll need to navigate to the Create Preset icon box, which is just under the histogram. If you select this normally, you can see that it brings up a box to save your adjustments as a preset, but if you hold the Option key down on your Mac, it allows you to save the changes as a profile. Here, you can select the adjustments you want to include, and then name the profile accordingly before saving it. If Lightroom is already open at this point, you'll need to restart it for the profile to appear in the profile section. One of the key characteristics of a film image is a soft looking highlight roll off. To try and emulate this, I started by building a log profile in Photoshop with the aim of replicating a flat film scan. This compresses the highlights and strips back some of the sharpening that is naturally produced by a digital sensor when processing a raw image. With this as my base, I am then able to apply a lookup table to place the profile into a colour space that's more film-like. Once the profile is complete, I can then import this into Lightroom, where I can apply it to an image and use the Lightroom controls to focus on the third pillar of the emulation workflow, which is tonality. Depth in an image is created by multiple factors, including both composition and texture. But what really stands out to me with analogue photography is the way subjects tend to pop out of the image. The preset that I've developed over time adds density to the primary colours in the image, whilst also introducing some micro-contrast, but still keeping the shadows and highlights under control. 
A good way to check this is to firstly look at the histogram to see if anything is being crushed on either side of the scale, and then to apply the peaking feature which allows you to see if any detail is being lost. Just to show you this in action, here's an image with blown out highlights before the profile and preset are applied, and here it is after. As you can see, the highlights have been compressed, this contributes to a smoother roll off and a much more film like image. With the profile and the preset now applied, I can save an additional preset which includes the use of the original profile. This way I won't need to apply both parts to each image as I edit. As I mentioned, I want my workflow to be as concise as possible, and with this setup applied, I then just need to make simple adjustments to each image to correct exposure, white balance, contrast and sharpening. With the image now treated with the profile, the preset and colour corrected, I can now finish off the process by addressing the final pillar texture. If you're happy to use Lightroom's grain module then you can simply apply the effect in the grain section and modify the size and roughness to your desired level. If you're using the grain actions in my texture pack then you'll want to start by following the instructions to import the actions into Photoshop. You'll then need to right click on the image and navigate to edit in Photoshop. Once in Photoshop it's a simple case of opening up the actions tab opening the grain action and running either the ISO 200 or ISO 400 grain action. For this particular image I'll choose ISO 400 and I'll run the action by selecting the play icon. With the grain now applied you can zoom in to see just how much this affects your image. To me this looks great and far more authentic than Lightroom's built-in grain module. To finish off the image I can now select the bottom layer and unlock it if needed to run the last texture action which merges the grain into the sharper edges of the photo and bakes the texture into the components of the image. This gives the illusion that the photo is actually made up of grain as opposed to sitting on top of the image as a filter. If I unselect this action and then reselect it, you can see how this takes effect. It also adds in some additional contrast to the parts in which the grain is most highly concentrated. Now that the image is complete, you can select the bottom layer again, right click and select flatten image. This merges all of the layers together and keeps the file size under control for export. So that's what my workflow looks like. I hope this was helpful in some way. If you've got any questions, feel free to let me know. And if you've got your own film emulation, I'd love to know what that looks like. I'll see you in the next one.